Hello everyone, and welcome to my devlog series. This is the first devlog episode for my game tentatively called Decrypt. Decrypt is a top-down, locally multiplayer roguelike with players fighting their way out of a crypt which is filled with many monsters, items, and biomes. It was originally inspired by a game jam project I did back in 2017. This game was rough, but I really thought it was a fun idea and I wanted to expand on it. Over the next couple of years, I'd pick it up and experiment with a few things here and there, but I never felt I was ready to turn it into anything special. It wasn't until 2019 that I had the realization that I'd been using Unity for over 10 years and hadn't made a project I felt was worthwhile. This was at the same time I found Michael Koch's 30 day challenge on his Discord and thought, why not? So I went through that and decided that something on that scale was a bit too big for me. Quests, mounts, multiple NPCs? No. I needed something smaller than that, but bigger than anything I'd done before. So lots of prototyping and planning later, I settled on this. Now, the game in its current form is still in the early stages of development, but I have a solid plan in place now, and in fact the entire game actually exists in these two books. Everything will probably end up changing, but at least I've tried to put the thought into it. Development going forward will be done in two week sprints, with a devlog at the end of each sprint. This way I can keep a good pace and not put too much pressure on myself with devlogs since firstly they're meant to motivate me and hold me accountable. If I can inspire somebody else to make something great too, all the better since I know I've gotten plenty of inspiration from others doing this. So enough intro, let's grab some coffee and jump into the past few weeks of development. Like all projects, we start with a clean slate and get Trello set up. This is actually the first time I've used Trello. Up to this point, I've just kept lists or used GitHub projects. But I can say after just using it two weeks, it's great. And I'll be using it going forward to manage any development tasks. And the first one happens to be movement. I initially got movement knocked out basically instantly, but somehow forgot that collision doesn't work with translate movement out of the box. I typically use rigid bodies. This was about the time that I decided to try nav mesh movement for the players since I've never done that before and it makes sense for this kind of game. So I got that in and was pretty happy with it after some tweaks. For some reason, after that, I thought it would be a good idea to have a bunch of ways to control the player, like mouse relative movement and some other really horrible ideas. I implemented about five or six actually and then settled on two, mouse and keyboard, and twin stick. During all that, I was fighting with the new input system, which I haven't used much before and I still have some annoyances with, but I think I'm gonna like it in the long run, so rip in control. After I got all that nailed down, the remaining systems in Sprint 1 fell into place pretty quickly by comparison. I got an inventory system in place, which still has an item duping glitch I'm saving for later to fix, but That'll probably be fixed by itself when I clean up the input handler. Next, I got started on the melee system. I went back and forth on hit detection methods, but eventually I settled on using an overlap box with sizing depending on the weapon being used. I might switch it out eventually, but this system makes me happy for a first pass, especially when I figure out the bug that's hitting every enemy on the planet. After that, it was time to build an enemy to use this giant glow stick on. Before long, I had an enemy that would make a good blueprint for the future, could attack, be attacked, and drop items on death. I'll eventually want to add raycasting to him so that the player can break line of sight and the enemy will look for the player, but that's a task for next pass. Since I couldn't really debug the strangeness of the whole earth destroying glow stick, I figured it was time to throw together a simple health indicator for testing. I'm actually having a hard time deciding on how health will work. In the books, health worked on a heart system, but putting that into the game made me question if that's the right move. I'll probably try both and see what works. The last real task I wanted to finish was a ranged weapon system. It took a couple of tries, but I finally got one that I liked that was super easy to set up, but customizable enough that each projectile could use its own script if I wanted to. I ended up going back and redoing some of the melee system with that as a result. 
making it so that any player or enemy could pick up any item and use it since they would all have the common interface. So I'm pretty happy with that because I wasn't expecting to get that done on the first pass. So with all that done, it was time to write this script and make the devlog itself. Next sprint will be a bit more organized since I know roughly what my two weeks look like and how much I can get done in that time. Right now I'm hoping to knock out the first player model and animation set. I'm not super strong in Blender coming from 3ds Max, but I'm hoping it doesn't take more than a week. If that's the case, I'll probably knock out a better camera system and do an art prototype if I'm lucky. With that, I want to thank you a ton for watching and feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion below. As usual, like and subscribe to see more or go ahead and smash that dislike button if it wasn't for you. Take it easy and thanks again.